guys, welcome to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas from Duotone Foiling and I'm standing here with Jerome Bonnier, our foil designer. And today we want to talk about foil basics. How does a foil work? Which components are we playing with? And what's important? What's misleading? What do people need to know about foil design to understand how the whole system works? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's great to hear it straight from, from the horse's mouth. Um, so Jerome, uh, we have a few pieces here and we have a drawing board. Yep. And um, I think uh, you're going to explain to us what you're playing with when you're designing a foil. And I think a lot of these basics are quite important for the people to understand also how, why certain foils look, how they look and what should they do and what's the idea to what, what you want to achieve with that. So um, maybe just go quickly through the components we have before you get the pen in your hand. Sure. So first of all, we've got um, the front wing, which is actually, actually going to generate the lift, right? So that's kind of an important part of our foil. This front wing is going to be mounted at the front of the fuselage. And the fuselage is basically connecting all the parts together. So you've got the rear wing or the stabilizer going to be mounted at the back here. And your mast is going to fit on top of the fuselage over here. So that's basically your foil, and you can play around with any of these components. You can go smaller, bigger with any of them, and that's going to change how your foil rides. Okay, so we get into the details of the different mast options you have in our mast clip. We get into the different fuselage options, because that's also changing a lot the riding behavior in a fuselage clip. Um, we have an individual clip coming on every single uh, range we have of foils and then talk details about the different design aspects of a foil. Um, but this is basic, so how does this lift me out of the water? What's happening? All right, so I guess that's when I go to the drawing board. Yes. <laughs> and we do our foil uh, theory 101. Uh, to keep it very simple, let's just draw our, our board like this, moving in, in this direction. I've got my back foot here, the back of the board, front foot somewhere here, and my center of gravity ideally is right in between my feet. So I've got my body weight pushing down. Uh, let's pretend I'm uh, 75 kilos. So that's what's happening on top of my board. Then I've got a mast which is often placed just in front of my uh, back foot. Let's pretend that this is the water. Probably blue is a better color. Water is here. And obviously, underneath the water, I've got my fuselage set up with a rear wing here and a front wing at the very tip of my fuselage. And uh, as we've just mentioned, the front wing is going to be doing the lifting job. So, so once you start moving forward? Once you start moving and you sort of reach your cruising speed, uh, that's when ideally you've got your fuselage completely horizontal at zero degrees, right? So we've got our body, rate, body weight uh, acting down, pushing down, and our front wing is generating lift. Probably should change color. So green is going to be the lift generated by my front wing. And uh, my, my rear wing, my stabilizer, is actually angled down. So it has a negative angle of attack. Okay. And uh, the profile that I've got on my stabilizer is also upside down compared to the front wing. All right, yeah, so you can see that here, this is the profile that gets the water flow, and this is the bottom side, right? Yeah, so there's always kind of one side which is flatter, and the other one, the, the upper side on the front wing, is a little bit more curved, and the bottom is a little bit flatter. And when you look at the rear wing, it's kind of the opposite. The top side is kind of the flatter one, and the bottom one is, uh, is the more rounded, the more curved one. Meaning that this rear wing is actually pushing down, right? So that's sort of removing lift from my front wing. So to achieve this sort of level flight where I'm able to lift my 75 kilos, I would, for example, need to have a front wing which is generating, let's say, 80 kilograms. 
but then I've got a rear wing which is removing, that's a minus, five kilograms. And 80 minus five is gonna give me the 75, that lift of 75 kilograms so that I'm level, I'm able to, to, to ride with, with my body weight. So that's kind of the, the very first important thing to understand is that the stabilizer is sort of fighting against the lift of the front wing. And that's something a lot of people probably don't know. They see two wings and they think both, both these wings are lifting. Mm -hmm. It's not the case. So that's kind of the, the, the one thing to understand about, uh, about foils. And uh, when we are designing the foils, we obviously sort of always trying to balance the lift that the stabilizer is generating so that we can cruise level with the fuselage being horizontal within the speed range that we have uh, in mind. In okay, mind. exactly. Now, you, if you mention the stabilizer takes off lift of the system, yeah. that makes me wonder if I'm putting a bigger stabilizer on, normally what I feel is like more power under my board, right? Yeah. So how does that come along? So you're, you're very right. Uh, there is a lot of confusion out there with, with this. Uh, people think that when they, you know, they decrease the angle of the stabilizer even more by shimming it, or when they use a bigger stab, they will tell you, oh, I've got a more lifty foil. Actually, it's the opposite. By doing that, as you said, you are removing more and more lift from your front wing, and you feel like you've got a, a more lifty foil only because you're moving what we call the center of pressure. The, basically, I think you can, you can see that if I'm lifting here and pushing down, I'm generating a moment, like there's a torque happening, which is translated through the mass, through the board. So as that board goes through the water, the nose wants to go up because of that, because of these two forces. And when I have a bigger stab, I'm increasing that moment. And that's what you feel, that front foot pressure that you feel is actually the moment increasing, but it's not the actual lift. The actual lift, which is this value, minus this one, the lift is going down. So you've got a less efficient fall by doing it. And it's, you mentioned to me before that it's moving this center of lift forward if yes. I'm increasing this power. Exactly. So that's what I feel then as the increased front foot pressure, right? Exactly. So your sort of center of pressure is, uh, let's use the, the black again for the center of pressure. What, and that's just what you're feeling in your board. As I'm, I'm going bigger on the stabilizer, it's sort of, I feel like there's a lift coming further forward, so I feel it more in my front foot. But the actual value here is gonna be, let's say, 70 kilograms. Because, because I doubled the size of this one. Because I'm removing more. Or went for a longer tail end, long, could longer for, fuse. Exactly, you could go with a longer fuse, which would increase that lever arm. And same again, it will move your center of pressure forward and you will feel like you've got more front foot pressure. Mm -hmm. And um, so what's yeah. the benefits? Like, because you're reducing lift and what's the benefit of that? It so it, it gives you a lot of stability uh, to, to, in, to sort of push that center of pressure away from your mast. Uh, often when you do that, you will want to equalize everything again by moving your mast back mm -hmm. into your tracks so that you've got that 50, 50% uh, feel in your front and, and rear way, uh, foot. Um, so you, if you're a beginner, uh, that could be interesting to go, you know, slightly bigger on the on the rear wing. So you design the foils like that, that you have built-in stability. So this lift exactly. center of lift further forward on the entry-level foils, entry when it gets more technical or high-end, you want to have it exactly closer. That's exactly. It. So in general, you will see that all our beginner foils, uh, they will have a, a mass position that we recommend a little bit more back in the tracks because that center of pressure is a little bit more forward because beginners need pitch stability. And as we progress through our range and we go into the more uh, advanced front wings, you will see that we recommend moving the mass a little bit further forward uh, because we've got more efficient foils which have that center of pressure closer to the front wing. Talking roughly one, two centimeters. Yeah, we're trying to keep it you know, within the range of the tracks that we have. So we don't really want it to, to be like a difference of six, seven centimeters between the beginner and the advanced. But yeah, it's often two, maximum three centimeters. But that makes a difference. From the most beginner friendly to the most advanced. All right. Roughly, yeah. 
Well, there's a lot of theory behind uh, all this. I'm not sure if everybody understands exactly what's happening here, but it's definitely very interesting to hear because that's ultimately what flows into every single foil we will talk about in this uh, in these series of episodes, and uh, that influences all the simulations that are happening behind the scenes of how lifty that profile should be and how this wing should look like in particular. Yeah. Um, so yeah, follow and subscribe if you want to see all these details on the individual um, foils that we talk about and talk all the design aspects. We also have an episode coming on the R&D, how we test, how we develop and how do you simulate and calculate together with our um, simulating man behind the scenes, Poldo. Yep. So that's very interesting stuff. I hope you enjoy that content and uh, stay tuned for more.